Hello, it's Jeannie Gillespie here and welcome back to a Valentine's Day special on visionary photographic design. It's all about creating unique photographic art. It's great to have you here and to see all your smiling faces today. We're talking about visionary photograph design with a focus on thing-centered design. So what is thing-centered design? It's all about a subject. So working around something. So we're going to try and keep this to eight minutes. I can't make any promises, but I'm feeling good about it. And this Trinity analogy that keeps coming up, we're going to keep referring back to this, the power of three. This super mini course is built on the presumed knowledge that you have a sh- uh, knowledge of shutter speed, aperture and ISO. And we need to know how they all complement each other. You can't use one without using the others properly. And you need to use all three of them with the knowledge of the other. So a little less like the three blind mice and a little more like the three musketeers or the three amigos. So to take great photos and be fully manual and proficient with your camera will really help at this stage of adding that creative design element. And those three things, shutter speed, aperture and ISO, are super important and they need to work well together. So the better you know these settings and the easier your state of creative flow. And this will help you truly reflect, reflect your vision of your, the photographic design that you have. So let's get started. Happy Valentine's Day. What a great day to share our love. And today you are my sweet Valentine. And I have a a series of um, mini little cheat sheets that are all part of the visionary photographic design process or method that I use. So it's a lovey-dovey day. And what's that all about? Well, here at Georgian Creation, it's all about sharing the love. It's time to be spoiled. It's time for the most wonderful photographs of pretty things in our lives um only we don't just want to take the recipe of photographs that you know that the trio that we were talking about in the opening we want to build a little bit on that so not just that simple steadfast working recipe we want you to express yourself your vision and do this in your photographic design so cutting back to the basics it's a great time of year to treat yourself your family your lover your friend and and you can even plan it to remind you of what a wonderful time that you have even if it is those bubbles in the bath um the treat time that you've given yourself it doesn't have to be about other people it can just be about connecting with yourself So with our VDP method, which is our visionary photographic design, we encourage you to take your photography one step further. So develop and designing dreams, visions, goals, and then bringing them into your photographic design. So there's great products and service photographs and design. Well, they don't just happen. So behind them lies a development and a design process that starts with an investigation of both um, your needs in terms of expression, market needs, and I guess competitive environment as well. So to see what's out there if you're entering competitions, if you're doing this for a commercial reason and you're wanting to stand out from the crowd. But also you've got your budget, your resources, um, your image that you want to keep whether it's cutesy whether it's dark whether it's look we're we're trying to put in here personal taste and corporate at the same time so just it's about connecting with yourself and it really getting that design product out there so the brand image and the style and the function of your new product because we're going to center this around a thing um so it's sometimes easier to say a product but we're going to use it i'm going to use a cupcake So visionary photographic design method. I swear it really is a thing. And it's about adding a little strategy into your how, why, where, and what you are planning to photograph. So how are you going to design your environment to make what you're photographing look great too? So Dorian Creation provides training for a more creative design thinking, innovation in the design method known as visionary photographic design, VDP. So VDP is a method developed at the forces 
um, sorry, that forces you to examine the ideas underlying your design and to do this in great detail. So before you bring that plan out into the wonderful world. So what exactly is it that you want people to understand, experience, do or see in your image when they look at it? So really, this is about photographing the best parts. It's loving that thing that you're taking a photograph of. So instead of trying to follow a formula or of the perfect photograph, um, instead, the final print idea is going to match your goal, a vision of what it is that you wanted your image to do for the viewer. So it's not just about um, getting it right. It's about creating an experience, an emotion or um, whatever, whatever it is that you have decided you're wanting to do. So there is a method and a strategy in part of this, which is what makes it a design. So the VPD method asks the photographic designer to come up with a vision of a relationship between the author and the final print. And when they use that vision as a basis for the designing a strategy of lighting, setting, environment, subject, and um, lighting settings and camera settings, that is, um, it's when this all comes together and starts to happen. As part of our visionary photographic design, there's a little extra something, and that's thing-centered design. So we're designing, in this case, it is easier to start off around a thing. So what's that thing going to be? Now you can spend some time either deliberating or deciding on what you want on this. I'm gonna make it simple. And I'm just gonna say, it's a pink cupcake. So we like to begin our research and designing by digging deep, into ourselves before we pop onto social media or whatever other platform that we're going to use as a portfolio. Just, well, it, it helps to see what others have come up with and the creative possibilities of, in this case, this cupcake and how it can be photographed. So before we get to doing working around the other people's ideas and the inspiration that may add on to it, let's dig deep into ourselves to see what we naturally come up with. So the thing that I have picked that we're going to photograph is a pink cupcake. So our visionary photographic design process is working around a thing, a subject. So whatever that subject is, we're just going to call it a thing. And in this case, this thing is a cupcake. So you get a piece of paper and a pencil. I like to use a good strong HB or something like that. So a nice high contrast, smooth, big piece of paper, something that you can just write on. And it's, it's, I think it's the childlike, um, doesn't matter what errors, whatever you make, just to set a timer, have your piece of paper, your pen, pencil, whatever works for you. And ideally you actually have the cupcake in front of you. It, it can work to just have an image in your head of the cupcake, but um, let's just let's just pretend for now that you actually have it physically there in front of you. So your thing is sitting in front of you. You've got your piece of paper. You set a timer for 10 minutes and you write down absolutely every single thing that comes into your head in that 10 minutes. Now, that, that might sound a little bit odd. You're going to have weird things on your on your when you sit on your plate, on your sheet. Don't worry about that. The more you have on it, you're still only ever going to pick the highlighted areas at the end of all this. So the things that are standing out to you as being worth investigating. So write down every single goddamn thing that comes into your head. Now, you need to kind of take a little break after this. Like literally moments, but just stand up, shake your body, shake your head, do a little dance, whatever it is that works for you and change your angle. So keep looking at your cupcake, which is your thing as it's thing centered design in this photograph, sorry, visionary uh, photographic design method. And just change your angle, maybe walk around it, maybe hold it in your hand, put it down again and take a little breather and look at what you've written. Then pick up your cupcake again, have a little look at it, maybe even have a sneaky little lick of that icing and then place it somewhere new. So it doesn't matter whether it's on the floor, up higher. Well, it's harder to see up higher, but, you know, just change the perspective a little bit. And this time, set your timer for 20 minutes. So you've done your little dance, you've done your little jiggle, and you've got yourself comfortable now into a new spot. 
So it's at this stage that we get our um, second piece of paper. It has to be a clean piece of paper. Put the other one to the side, nowhere in front of you so you're not distracted to see what you've written already. It's um, not like you're copying off somebody in school. This is really just to restart the whole process again. You've jiggled yourself around, get your bum comfy in the seat, set the timer for 20 minutes and write down every single thing that you can imagine with this cupcake. So it's not just everything that comes into your head. You're now starting to start off or just trigger the visionary process. So it's all about how you're going to photograph this cupcake. You have your cupcake. How are you going to photograph it? Do you want it in a um, uh, straight in front of you? Do you want it being held? You know, just the color of it. Do you want to gel to change the color of it, the environment, the light, whether it's natural? And then once you have all these things, like every single thing that you can ever think about on this piece of paper within your 20 minute timer, the 20 minute timer is important because it means that you can just cut off your time. You're not checking your watch. You just know that whenever the buzzer goes, that that's it, you're done. So you're putting down everything from a memory to a future idea to, you know, how would this cupcake look 50 years ago? How would it look like in a hundred years time? anything that pops into your head um, what would it look like if it was buried underground what would it look like if it was in a balloon being floated into the sky with spy camera in it doesn't matter what your ideas are how weird they are just write it all down on paper if it is however something very personal or something that you don't want um to um you know that you just don't want to be sharing Obviously, you've written something down and somebody could come across it, write a little code thing or a little or a little sketch. But still, it's important to put everything down because this is a non-censored way to get everything um, it, as part of this design process, because you never know what parts are going to be important. The next stage is rest and digest. So this is the whole February thing that I'm always saying, rest and digest, you know, which, so it just happens that this works really well for this project. So at this stage, you have two pages of scribbled words and on a fresh piece of paper. So it's just a third piece of paper and a fresh piece of paper. Write down the words from those two sheets. I work one sheet at a time. Um, that stand out to you. And you just keep doing this until though all those words, pictures, whatever they are, become all the way down to three words or images, whatever it is. We're going to say words. Now, there, there could be hundreds there. It does take some time to work this down, work this, um, work this out and filter through to whatever's standing out to you most. But the important thing is that you've got to bring it back down to the trinity to the trio um i just find that working in threes works for me and i'm i'm hoping that that method might also work for you the next steps i feel are a little easier to work through so the next one is why so what is your why um do you want your image to be faster cheaper better bolder brighter maybe you want to cause a stir cause a reaction or make a statement, or maybe even you feel that now is your time to be seen and you want to um, make a standout or individual and unique art piece that people will pay attention to. So your why in my case is I'm picking something bigger, brighter, bolder. So the bigger is it's a party, baby, brighter, something naughty, lighthearted. So it's brighter in my soul. Okay, that sounds a bit hippie-ish, but you get me. And bolder, so we're pink. We're picking pink. Sure, it's Valentine's. Pink to make the boys wink. So this is what we're going. And sure, why not today? It's because I want to take that little cupcake and crown it. We're going to bring it one step further then. So we have our why. We're crowning our cup cupcake. We want it to be bigger, bolder, brighter. We've chosen our ways that we're going to do that. And now where are we going to do that? So the next stop is bringing together the how, why, and deciding on your where. Are you going to do this in studio, on location, or are you going to create an environment? But why take the hassle of making notes, researching, breaking down your entire thought process of a cupcake into three points? Well, you probably have heard the saying that a picture is worth a thousand words. Many photographic designers use the visualization skills to convey a message, check assumptions or draft ideas. So we're going to bring all this together to actually print our vision 
onto, uh, sorry, capture and print our vision um, so that hopefully it evokes perhaps an emotion or um, whatever it is that we're wanting to say. So my, my what, what is your what? So we, here we have the cupcake. So our cupcake is our, our, our subject and we're going naughty, pink, party. They're the three points that I decided on. So the naughty is the lightheartedness. Um, you'll see visuals for this in the YouTube um, channel. And so we've got our why being our naughty pink party. So we've got naughty why. In that I have a dog licking a whisk um, because it's, you know, he's just a little chancerish and it makes me smile. Um, pink, great colour for this time of year. It's also one of my favourite colours and party because it's got a feel good factor. We want to crown this cupcake, go big or go home. So where are we going to do this? This can be very much budget based. So um, it depending on what your equipment is, what you're going to be using, DSLR, um, camera phone, whatever that may be, and what your access is to locations, getting out of the house and your uh, uh, mobility, I mean, I said ability. Actually, ability is important as well. And then what you're going to photograph. So whatever your how, what, where, and now your what, it's personal to you. And it's the center of your photographic design. We use the three point method in our photographic design and we can build around these three points um, to present ideas, work around anything that you're wanting to present. In this case, I've just got a cheeky little image of, um, it does have a cupcake in it and a pink cupcake, but it also has um, other things in there. There's a little hand just taking a little cheeky cherry off the, um, the fancy cake. You'll see it again on the YouTube channel, but it's there and you may want to, that's because I wanted to add in a person. I didn't want a face because, you know, then they, oh, do you know what it's all about? You know, expression and stuff. I just wanted that little, personal touch and then I wanted to bring my other elements together so have a look at the image on the YouTube channel there should be a um, which is on Dora Jean Creation uh, YouTube or the website and if you need a link for it I'm sure I can add it in the back of here good luck enjoy your process and keep visualizing Thank you for listening. It's Jeannie here from Dorjean Creation. Please feel free to subscribe to our website, dorjeancreation.com, to our YouTube channel to keep up to date with cheat sheets, free courses, tutorials, and even just little updates that we have or some fun stuff that we come across. So thank you for listening. We delight in sharing with you. Um, I hope you get something out of this. So don't forget, dorjeancreation.com, like and subscribe. Thank you for listening.